everyone knows North Africa or Northern Africa as a region encompasses the northern portion of the African continent. Yet, everyone seems to have widely different ideas on what exactly is the scope for the region. And the answer varies depending on who you ask. Sometimes it is defined as stretching from the Atlantic shores of Mauritania in the west all the way to Egypt's Suez Canal. Varying sources limit it to the countries of Algeria, Libya, Morocco and Tunisia, a region that was known by the French during colonial times as Afrique du Nord and is known by Arabs as the Maghreb West, which translates to the western part of the Arab world. The United Nations definition includes Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Sudan and the Western Sahara, the territory disputed between Morocco and the Sahrawi Republic. The African Union definition on the other hand includes Western Sahara and Mauritania, but curiously excludes Sudan. You see, the geographic entity of Northern Africa has no single accepted definition because of a whole set of geopolitical reasons. North Africa is more closely associated with Western Asia than with the rest of Africa under the umbrella of MENA to form the Middle East North Africa region, but this also cuts out Egypt from the group and only includes countries of the Maghreb. So, the mass confusion of where to place these five countries, whether they should be Western Asia or Southern Europe, has become so convoluted that it has led to them essentially being denied the identity of being African, despite being definitively and unquestionably on the African continent. Tokenism, the practice of making only a symbolic effort to do a particular thing, especially by recruiting a small number of people from underrepresented groups in order to give them an appearance of equality. In my mind, the rest of Africa is guilty of tokenism against North African countries and should not get a get-out-of-jail-free card on some of the blame. In Africa-wide conferences meant to discuss African issues, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya and Egypt have often had tokenistic representation, if any at all. When Egyptian Mohamed Salah won the 2017 African Footballer of the Year award, the internet went into a frenzy, all because some Africans did not think Mo Salah was African enough to win the title. In 2015, Nigerian Chigozi Obioma was listed as the sole African writer on the shortlist for that year's Booker Prize for Literature for the best novel written in English, overlooking the presence of Moroccan-born Leila Lalami, who was also nominated. These are certainly not the first time and probably won't be the last that North Africa's Africanness is questioned. So why are Africans from north of the Sahara sometimes not considered definitively African? This gaping divide between Africans based on where on the continent their countries are located has been the subject of heated debate among African scholars. Many blame colonialism for their divide and rule principles, while others say the division existed much earlier. No doubt Islamic influence in the area is very significant and North Africa is a major part of the Muslim world. However, whether North Africans identify as African isn't as simple as Arabic speakers being equal to Arab people. The process of Arabization and Islamization that has defined the cultural landscape of North Africa is not exclusive to the North. The religion argument is therefore not enough to hold any merit. You see, even though North Africa has a strong Islamic population, a whooping 90% of the region ascribes to the Islam faith. Islam is also the dominant religion in parts of West Africa, the Sahel and even East Africa, with notably large communities in Nigeria, Kenya, Tanzania, Somalia and Ethiopia. Perhaps then it simply boils down to color. Could it be that to be African is to be black? And if so, what shade will do? Are the South Sudanese who are famous for their skin pigmentation that is dark, rich and beautiful more African than their neighbors to the north who are of lighter skin? 
Surely, a categorization and dichotomy based on race is too simplistic and ignores Africa's vast diversity in nations, cultures, ethnicities and languages. Indeed, no other continent even comes close to Africa's diversity. It is simply a fact that North Africans are African and it's an identity they will have to insist upon. North Africans' collective feeling of considering themselves African only when their national football teams play in the African Cup of Nations is writing on the wall that signals a massive problem that urgently requires a quick fix. Are schools in North Africa not teaching African history? In many instances, no doubt that the country's Arab Muslim identity is overly emphasized. You see, being an Arab is not an alternative to being African or even being black. Why not be both and embrace the duality of both worlds? Let's take Mauritania as an example. The country has a population of 5 million, divided between the Arab Berber population to the north and black Africans to the south. Despite its prevailing Arab culture, Mauritanian society is multi-ethnic. The Bidan or so-called white Moors make up 30% of the population, while the Haratin or so-called black Moors comprise 40%. Both groups reflect a fusion of African, Arab, Berber ethnicity, language and culture. Mauritanians can therefore identify as Arab and African at the same time. Certainly, there is a lot to say about the distance between North Africa and the rest of the continent. Some North Africans have tried to distance themselves from Black Africa. A good example is that after independence, Countries like Egypt and Algeria looked to the Middle East for a model of an Islamic nation, and Morocco and Tunisia looked to Europe for economic partnerships. Aside from this, many mainstream scholars have for years hypothesized that unlike black Africans found south of the Sahara, North Africans have a similar level of Neanderthal DNA as South Europeans and West Asians and that modern North Africans derive mainly from a back-to-Africa population from Eurasia from before 12,000 years ago, which seems to represent a genetic discontinuity with the earliest modern human settlers of North Africa. However, recent human fossil discoveries in Morocco, overshadowing those in Ethiopia, Kenya and Tanzania in terms of age and scientifically dated back to 300,000 years ago, provided evidence that the human species evolved in multiple locations across the African continent. Only much later, roughly 70,000 years ago, did a small group of Africans make their way to other continents. Perhaps the colonial history shared between North Africa and the rest of Africa could be a stark reminder that they all belong to the same continent. The bond between Algeria and South Africa was strengthened in the 1950s and 60s around their respective colonial clampdowns. Algeria is my country. Nelson Mandela was trained by the armed forces of the Algerian National Liberation Front. In his book Long Walk to Freedom, Mandela revealed his struggle against apartheid was greatly inspired by the struggle of the Algerian soldiers who were fighting against French imperialism. Returning to Algiers in 1990, Mandela declared, The Algerian army made me a man. On a more positive note, in recent years, North African countries have been turning their focus away from Europe and towards their own continent. North Africa's return to Africa has been a striking feature of the region's foreign policy in recent years. The countries have stepped up their engagement with countries south of the Sahara, recognizing them as leading emerging markets and a region whose influence in international politics is likely to increase in the coming years. This back to Africa shift in focus is driven by three main factors. First, some countries are engaged in an effort to win diplomatic support on significant questions of national interest. For Morocco and Algeria, the dispute over Western Sahara and their broader geopolitical rivalry. In the case of Egypt, it's concern about the giant dam Ethiopia is building on the Nile. 
beyond this diplomatic effort is also a response for the need to collaborate to the rising security threats from radical Islamic militants. Finally, the shift is also driven by economic concerns. North African countries are searching for new markets and seeking to position themselves for economic advancements thanks to sustained economic growth rates in the rest of Africa compared to slow growth rates of traditional European trading partners. The favoring of the South is also a reaction to the failure of regional integration within North Africa where trade between countries remains low. Economic and political cooperation in the proposed Arab Maghreb Union is, for lack of a better word, dead on arrival due to the Algerian-Moroccan deep-seated rivalry because of the standoff over Western Sahara. All the same, in conclusion, I strongly believe that a supposed difference between an Arab North Africa and the rest of Africa is non-existent and should be spoken against by all African creators, which includes independent writers, artists, social media influencers, videographers, podcasters and so on. African diversity should never be used as an excuse to exploit African people. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section. As always guys, I hope you got value out of this video. Please give it a like, share it around and subscribe if you did. I also would like to thank our great supporters on Patreon, whose generous contributions allow us to keep expanding and creating more high quality content. If you'd like to help out with the channel, please head over to patreon.com slash reasonafrica. That's patreon.com slash reasonafrica. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.